Hello everyone and welcome to Osos Wrestling and to episode number 6 of the Academy series. Very sorry for the wait on this video. Uh, obviously I didn't intend it to be like this, but I could definitely use a break. Um, we did just pass 150 subscribers, so that's great. Uh, thank you guys for that. Um, yeah, sorry about the videos being inconsistent. I'm going to try very hard to, you know, get back to two videos every week. But uh, in the meantime, we'll just get through this one. Wrestler of the Year is La Sombra. Company is CMLL. Team is Caristico and Rush. Match is at Lucha Azteca, where Volador Jr. and Alberto defeated Omega and Fox by countout. Show is October, some show that CMLL ran. Um, actually, CMLL kind of ran... I don't know if La Sombra works in CMLL now, but he did very good. I mean, CMLL did very good. Young wrestler is Ryoga Akiba. Veteran is Alberto El Patron. Female is Bailey. Most improved is OTT. Independent is Kana, also known as Asuka. Manager is Dr. Wagner Jr. Announcer is Tanzan Inihara. And color commentator is Andres Moronas. Oh, and also referee is Nick Patrick. So moving on to the news, not too much, but uh, Junior Scorpio signs with MMPW. Must be a company that was randomly generated. Walter Wall is now classified as a brawler, and that's basically it. So not a very eventful year, unfortunately, but uh, mighty, mighty professional wrestling. That is an interesting name for a professional wrestling company, but uh, we'll see in a little bit how Junior Scorpio has been doing. First off, though, I don't want to jump the gun. We do have Alex Reynolds. See how he's done on the independents. Uh, three matches, or sorry, four matches, three wins, one loss. Highest rating 22, average rating 20. And he won his first three matches of the year, so he got off to a good start. And uh, I mean, the only match he lost was a tag match, so he won every singles match that he had this year. And uh, next up is Brogan Bennett. Still not signed, but uh, can't really expect to be signed, to be honest. And uh, still has plenty of time in the career. Only had one match against Arya Cadenza, which she lost, unfortunately. But she got a 14, so that's not the worst case scenario. At least she got a match. Hopefully Dragon Fist got a match. His basics are at 40, and I think that's pretty suitable. His basics have actually gone up a lot. So I think that's suitable enough to get him a... Nope. Oh my... What is up with this? Dragon Fist has some of the best stats of anyone. He just cannot seem to get booked, and I don't know why. I really don't. All right. Um. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll figure that out, I guess. Frank Youngblood, his stats are doing all right. Uh, I think I might have forgotten to add the championship. Maybe I don't know. But he's an enhancement talent for DPW now, so it looks like they might have grown a little bit. And we'll see how he did though. You know, zero wins, zero draws, eight losses, but he is still young. He has time to rise up the ranks, and, you know, he's getting 43s and 39s for his average rating, so I don't think he is mad at this at all. Um, hopefully, he can get a few more wins next year, but in terms of matches, I think he's had a very good year. Uh, next up, French Sensation. Hopefully, he can have a few matches he is uh, now rated as a flabby light heavyweight, so that's not the best physical condition someone can be in, but uh, he did lose to Tyler Colton in a match that got a 9. So not great, not a great year for the French sensation, but I still have faith that he will be able to push through and become a big star, you know, at least in Quebec. And next up is Jacob Wolf who did hopefully pretty good. His stats are looking all right. So hopefully the the match gods were kind to him and unfortunately no, which is a real shame because he should be getting, you know, matches. I really wish he had stayed in Australia instead of uh, moving to the United States, but 
I guess that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, next up is Junior Scorpio, currently a main eventer in Mighty Mighty Pro Wrestling and the current international tag champion over there. His stats are doing great. His microphone's actually doing really well, so that's a good to know. Or good to note, I guess. And we'll see uh, how he's doing otherwise. Six wins, zero draws, and four losses. His average rating's actually lower than Frank Youngblood's, which might just be because of the competition he's facing. But his highest rating was a 45, and that was in his last match of the year, where he lost to Chris Brave in a MPW global title shot. So he is actually in the, I guess, what their world title would be equal to. He's uh, in the running, and I don't actually know who his tag partner is, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, hopefully it's someone notable. Scorpio and Fit, is that it? Or, yeah, Scorpio and Fit. Who is Fit? Is this him? No. I guess it's this guy, Mark Fit. Interesting. All right. We'll see how Sam Barron did up next. His stats are doing pretty good. Uh, I don't know how much improvement he's had, but uh, overall, since he debuted at Houston, pretty well for himself. One win, one draw, and one loss. Uh, highest rating being a 16, average rating being 14. Nothing too crazy to go over here. I'm just happy that he's getting matches and his basics are still going up. So I really don't know. I guess it's just luck of the draw with this because Sam Barron's been booked pretty consistently, whereas uh, Dragon Fist just can't seem to catch a break. And uh, Tiger Dream. Obviously, kind of disappointing with the ratings, but that's just kind of the name of the game with this stuff. You can't really assume or expect anything from this series because it is completely based on chance and uh, sometimes you, you don't win with chance. I don't know why I was going with that, but uh, moving on to Two-Face, currently an opener with Smash, so we will see how he's doing, hopefully. Okay, so two wins, zero draws, eight losses. But his highest rating was a 52, and that was against Stu Grayson. So he did have a good year ratings-wise, uh, maybe even the best out of anyone. But uh, wins-wise, could have been better. Although, at least he did get some wins. Next up is Walter Wall. I am expecting him to do pretty well. His stats are certainly... Uh, I'm certainly saying he will. And... Uh, yeah, one win, one draw, one loss. Highest rating 25, average rating 22. So not the best uh, title-wise, or sorry, match-wise. Or... No, he got enough matches. It's uh, the ratings, not great, but then again, you got to kind of stack that up to competition. At least he's uh, in the 20s at this point, so he's a capable competitor. And actually, I want to take a look at Mighty Mighty Professional Wrestling. See, Chris Brave is their global... Um, Brands Engel is their TV, and, uh, basically, ooh, Bambi Killer, that's a nice name. Um, Cash Money Urkan, Doug Williams is there, anyone else I know? Probably not, this guy who stole, uh, El Generico's mask and cut the back off? I don't, I don't really know what went on there. They have Hiroshi Tenzan and Jado somehow. Um, yeah, that, oh, Minoru Suzuki? Why do they have all these Japanese stars who are over 50? I don't really understand that too much. And, oh my god. They have R-Truth. He's a manager, but somehow, mighty, mighty professional wrestling has R-Truth. That's great. Oh, wow, wait, wait, wait. I kinda want... I kind of want him to manage Junior Scorpio, because how cool would that be? Alright, uh, I really hope that happens. Dang, R-Truth is old. He must be in his 40s now. Huh. Alright, well, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it's a long time coming, and I should have had it out, like, two weeks ago. But, uh, thank you guys very much for being patient. Hopefully you still, uh, enjoy this series. And, uh, you know, thank you guys very much for watching. If you did like the series, or the video, rather, 
please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.